streaming. And now you can talk to the whole world right through that camera. Hi, everybody. We are going to fix a microwaved phone today. Hopefully, this is for data recovery. And this is an iPhone 4S. And let's start with a note. The note says, phone was put into a microwave, ran for a second, phone shot a flame out of the side, and it hasn't worked since. So there we go. That's what we have up for today. Uh, we've got some uh, local visitors, some local trick-or-treaters that have stopped by here. Do you guys think I'm going to be able to fix a phone that was in a microwave with a flame that I shot out the side? I bet you can fix it. Probably, yeah. yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> well, I will let you know. You guys can check in on, on iPad Rehab YouTube channel later tonight, and you'll see whether or not this guy gets his pictures back or if it's going to be bad news for him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with a microscope exam, and we will see what's going on with this one. So let's get rid of our uh, schematic for now. And this is the housing, so this is a pretty big nightmare. Let's see if I can click over to chat. Flamage, yes, they don't deserve their data then. Tough crowd. All right, let me hit pop out on chat. All right, pop out on chat. There we go. Hello from Russia. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So this is a housing. So this was obviously water damaged. And somebody got some bad advice from the internet, which is, you know, if your phone's wet, you can just throw it in the microwave to dry it out. That is not true. Do not try that. If you put a phone in a microwave, then it's going to catch on fire and make your things your problems a whole lot worse. And so microwave damage, we've done another stream where I put a phone in the microwave, so you can look that up on my channel. Um, but what happens is the microwave will heat up antennas in the phone and will make them get really, really hot and that will burn through the board. So microwave damage can be really, really, really severe. So I've been working on this one for a while. There we go. And let me take it apart, and we'll take a look. Let's bring back the old, good old hand cam. Where is the hand cam? Let's see. Hand cam is working. All right, so here we are. I'm going to take the tester parts off so that we can all take a look. So I've been working on this for a while. Oh, my gosh, the green screen is, is making my face crazy. I might have to fix that. Let's, that's too crazy. Too crazy. Let's fix this chroma key. Let's see. Mm. Let's do it Halloween style. I did think about coming in here in green face for Halloween, but ran out of time. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to just kind of show you around a little bit on what I've already done with this board. So let's get to, let's see. There we go. Alrighty. If you're going to put it in the microwave, you might as well add some rice. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, so let's see. Um, let's move the chat down. So the worst part of the damage on this phone was right here. You can see this like board has been really, <laughs> it looks like some kind of a, of a, like, uh, groundhog or something like a like in your yard has has like dug a tunnel through there. So that's that's like a couple layers of the board have just been chewed away. So this would have been a fire. So there was a fire here that has chewed through a, a couple layers of board, and there were some shorts in there that I had to clear. The Wi-Fi chip itself had an internal short. That was what was the preventing the phone from booting. So that was uh, pretty you know pretty severe. And let's see, down here we got another old, another hole in the board. How many holes in the board can you get from putting your phone in the microwave? So there was another short here. So this is a, uh, three things can cause a short circuit. One, capacitor that turns into a wire. Two, a chip that turns into a wire. Or three, mechanical short to ground. When an actual piece of wire in the board 
starts touching ground. And that's what you get when you have microwave phones. So you have to, the only way to solve a mechanical short is you got to get those two pieces of metal to stop talking to each other. And you do that with a good old fashioned razor blade. So I've dug out and separated all of these shorts. So now the phone will finally boot. And that was uh, exciting. Step two was it had no display whatsoever. So if we look back over here at the connector for uh, the display, so image and backlight, you can see there's a lot of stuff that's been removed. So I saw a big old hole in the board right here at backlight and took off. These guys are all kind of Wi-Fi related. These guys are backlight and we don't need backlight for data. And then I had to edit this connector a little bit and just kind of clean it up, replace this filter. And I did all that and I finally got back image and that's where we've left off. So this board last I checked a few minutes ago, it had image and it would boot and it would connect to iTunes. So we're so close. But when you go to enter the guy's passcode, it will not swipe. So let's sort of check in on that and make sure that that is still the case. And then we're going to try to figure out how the heck do we fix touch on a microwaved iPhone 4S? So let's see. Let's remember how to work these cameras. All right. So I'm going to stick this uh, back together here and then we're going to test it and see. All right. Uh, let's plug in my test screen. It's funny. We've got, I don't know, like 15 or 24 S screens, which are like, well, oh, geez, these are ready to go to the Smithsonian. I don't think we're going to need any of them. So sad. These days are done. That board booted? Yeah, well, we're going to see. So I'm going to show you guys. I, I've, this one's been here for a while. Microwave phones don't tend to be on my priority list. So I've put a couple of days into this board already. And then today I finally got it all the way up so that I just need one more thing, uh, which is for it to have touch. Okay. So it doesn't have backlight. So it's going to be a little bit tough for you guys to see, but we'll see if we can um, get that. That phone is ancient. Do your best to get the data off. No guarantees. Well, no guarantees. It's, it's guaranteed to have a couple of holes in it and not have backlight. I'll guarantee you that right now. Okay. So let's, let's take off the battery and let's hook up DC power supply so you can check that out so we can sh turn around here and look there is our dc power supply and our squid the ipad rehab supply battery connector squid still has a 4s so a 4 and 4s connector which i still find useful we still see a couple of these straggler iphone 4 4s every now and then we st still see a 3g Okay, so now I'm gonna prop this up. Since it doesn't have backlight, we're just gonna shine the microscope light behind here, and I'm also gonna get my phone ready to have kind of a DIY backlight back there. Let's prompt it to boot by plugging in. The, I, this is the hard thing to find. <laughs> How many 30 pin charge ports do you have laying around your shop? We have exactly one. All right, yay, Apple logo, woo, woo. All right, and now we can watch the DC power supply. Whoa, 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 Nelly, whoa. I'm not trying to do that. I just have really poor control over here. Okay, let's see, is it booting? All right, Ugh. <laughs> That's pretty lame, I'm trying to hold it with my hand. All right, so we can see that current consumption seems to be like a phone that is booting. There we go. That's better. That seems to be pretty active, moving around, turning the lights on. CPU seems to be playing the uh, orchestra. And it looks like this phone has come up to the lock screen. All right, so I'm going to park this camera back down so that you guys can stop throwing up in your seats. And plug it back in to wake up that display. All right, so I can see the display. Can you see it? It is a red tractor, red case tractor. Okay, we're almost there. All we need is to enter the passcode. So slide, 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 no, no touch. Sometimes it, it gives you like hope, which is like the saddest thing. 
you know, it gives you it gives you hope where you you're like, ah, oh, you know, the 4S sometimes it will be slow, like it really has to show you image and then pause, 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 and then it'll have touch. But this one is not having touch. So I've tried a couple of screens and it is a giant troll for touch. So what are we going to do? Help me out, guys, because we have a little bit of time before I have to go coach robotics with the kids to figure this out. Let's see. How often do you have to change anything on the JBC hot air station, if ever? I changed the heating element one time in the last, I think, four years. So not very often. All right, I'm going to disconnect this and see. Can't you use a physical keyboard at all? I know Apple sucks with peripherals, but you sure can as soon as you enter the passcode and hit trust. Then you can absolutely use a, a keyboard, but you got to be able to enter that passcode and hit trust. Um, you know, a lot of those, those mechanisms, you can get really creative with that stuff. There is a way to do it. We've done it before, but it is, it requires a lot of luck and a whole lot of steps. And it's, um, you know, a real, it, it's almost always more straightforward to fix touch. All right. Um, Yes. Okay. So, all right. Mm, I missed a lot of this, this chat. Okay. So we're going to head over to the schematic and let's just say, Hey, iPhone 4S. I don't think I've ever, am I coaching in FLL? I think so. Is that first? Is that what the first Lego Lego? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yes, I am. <laughs> Christy's really a whiz. She's a, Zach judges that, so we can like... Oh, yes, Zach judges totally that. Glued. Wait, does Zach judge the team that, like, these kids are on? Yeah, Zach is totally... Oh, right. my God! Zach We're is come... going to judge you. When are we coming over for dinner and, you know, <laughs> tell, tell Zach that he looks really nice in that sweater? All right. <laughs> have you worked with Lewis Rossman before? Yes. Yes, I have. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah, of course. I don't know how to answer that. Have I worked with... Have you worked with Lewis before? Yes, everybody's worked with this before. Okay, let's see if we can figure out how does touch work. I don't think I've ever fixed touch on an iPhone 4S. Uh, anything more than connector basic. So let's just see if we can figure it out. And that's why we want to do the stream. Something that's probably easy, probably something you can figure out. Let's just give it a shot. How do we start? We're going to start with the schematic. All right, so we're going to grab the good old iPhone 4S schematic. Where is that? Let's see. Uh, 4S schematic, where are you? Let's see, where did I put it? Let me get rid of a bunch of stuff. There it is. All right, so uh, hopefully you guys can see this. Okay, so how did we end up here at U19 Nimbus? So clever, Nimbus! And to think, I never knew. Uh, I thought that the word cumulus on iPhone 5, 5S, 5C, 6, 6 plus, 6S, cumulus on the mini, all those cumuli. Never knew that there was a Nimbus. Who knew in the iPhone 4S? Nimbus for the touch chip. All right, so how did we, how did we get here? Um, I started back at the connector, and the connector I think is a little bit tough to find. I think it was J5. Let's just see if we can find, ah, let's see if we can find J5. J5, show yourself. So J5. Nimbus connector. So this is where we plug in the touch part of the screen so we can guess that this stuff must have to do with touch. All right, so then we've got a bunch of data lines that look really similar to what we know are touch, uh, touch grid lines on all of the other iPhones. So let's just follow one and see where it goes. So let's just pick one here, Nimbus panel in, and then we've got all of this Nimbus VSTM out. And let's hit paste and see if we can learn a little bit more about touch all right so from the connector we've got all of those in lines that are going over here to a chip called u1019 now this jumps out at me no stuff no stuff generally means no worry about it because it's not on the board it's not stuff uh, but that's not the case there's definitely a chip in the u1019 position on the 4s so um so it's interesting. It means that somewhere along the design, there must have been some sort of a change where I'm guessing no stuff means that this may have been destined originally planned to be on the screen itself and then later was put on the board. Who knows? 
uh, your idea is as, is as good as mine. All right, so we can look at this chip and say, ah, it looks like a whole lot of touch data processing. It looks like a brain chip, and itself is powered powered on by this Nimbus VDDH and Nimbus VDD core. Now that's really similar to Cumulus has those lines as well. And then Nimbus VDD Anna, and then we've got this PP1V8 Nimbus LDO in. So we could go on a hunt to see if we have a short to ground or an open line or a problem with the chips that produce those voltages. And then we've got all of these things that look like maybe something that was a problem around here could take out all of touch. Let's see if we can find something that's, this, that's equivalent to the you know M1 problem of the iPhone 6 Plus touch disease. That would probably, that, that on the 6 Plus M1 goes to a line called uh, B sync reset. So maybe it would be the same as this grape reset when low. Things like that resets tend to be important, enables tend to be important. And if you've got a problem there, then that can take out all of your functions. So we have no touch at all. So we're looking for something that is going to be sort of problematic at a pretty deep level. All right, you know, we could have something like this where we have one of these um, internal uh, capacitors that don't go to ground, that just kind of go back into the chip. Um, maybe those are for this internal charge pump function. That's something that Chestnut normally does in the phones that we're used to working on. So maybe Chestnut function is part of the Nimbus chip, who knows? Um, so something like that, those guys would need to be there and they would need to be working most likely in order to be able to produce the um, voltages that you need for touch. But again, all of this is a guess. Your guess is as good as mine. Let's look at the page sort of in general. All right, so we've got Nimbus, which seems like the word for touch. We've got the connector. We've got uh, these two chips, U19 and U1019. And they're going to talk to each other just like our buddies Cumulus and Sage or Cumulus and Mason. So Nimbus VSTM out is probably going to go over and communicate with the other chip, just like Cumulus and Mason. All right, so this one is U19 doesn't say no stuff. Now, if we look at the if we look at the back of the board view, so let's see if we can go back to the board view. Let's just try to find out where is U19 and U1019 on the actual board, and kind of put our eyes on that area. So let's go on a hunt. Let's see if we can get back to that board view. Okay, so here on the board view, U19 slash U1019, there's one chip in this position. So I guess that means that, you know, U, U19, U1019, there's only one chip there. It's like the Cumulus and Mason are smashed together in one chip that's called Nimbus. All right, so uh, is there any place else that is U19 or U1019? And the answer is no, no other chip. So let's look for, let's type in U1019. Okay, so now let's kind of actually take a look at that area on our board, shall we? Let's go for a ride. Let's get rid of this and let's go back here and let's see what you guys have to see about this. All right, um, not married to the MOBO, mm, let's see. Jessa, would you like me to send you my iPad 2 and an iPhone 4S? Uh, no. <laughs> We've got a lot of those vintage dice. I really appreciate it. If you guys have um, things that are uh, water damage, something that's probably difficult to repair, or something that you're not going to repair, we can always use student training devices. So if you take your iPad 2 and you blow the backlight on it, sure, then you can send it, and that would make a good project for practical board repair school. So we always, you know, if you're otherwise going to throw away a device that's something that really doesn't make sense to repair or something that we don't offer a solution for, then rather than throw it away, donate it to the school. So we can always... Um, use real life cases. That's always good. You're coming in late to this conversation. Guess so. All right. Um, let's, let's take a look. So we've got a lot of damage around here. Let's see. Where's that U1019 chip? U19, U1019 Nimbus. And it's right here. All right. So that is up at the top of the board. There looks like there was corrosion from the original water damage so that we could have corrosion under that chip 
and we can still see a little bit of liquid that's still on the board. And if we kind of map that to like the rest of our problem areas, you know, it is kind of up here in the top of the board where things got hot. If we look at J5, the touch connector, it looks pretty good. If we look at the associated components around here, we've got these three guys over here. They look reasonably okay. Those guys look terrible. And I don't know what this guy is, but it looks like he's still on there. We're missing a dude here. I'm like seriously missing a dude and he's, he's gone. I just locked you in. You're okay. not expecting anyone, are you? Uh, no. Kids coming over or anything? No, I have to go meet them. All right, thanks, Christy. Good night. Good night. Okay, so it looks like, you know, for, the, for at least our first glance here, that we have a data chip here. Now, if we had more information, if we had a known good board, we could start querying those power lines to see if there was a short circuit on any of those. Um, but I'm going to go with, let's just see um, what it looks like under this chip. So let's take this chip off and see if we can get a, a donor. And let's tr just try that. All right, let's see. Oh my God, you're locked in. Yes, I'm locked in. Oh my gosh. All right. I have several boxes of dead phones and boards. All sorts of dead boards. Well, send us your dead boards because we have all sorts of students that need dead board projects to play around with where it doesn't really matter if they, if they um, ruin it or not. Um, those are always, always good fodder to think about an interesting problem. We had a really fun one at the last practical board repair school. We had a, we had a legitimate backlight coil failure from water damage where a tiny little molecule of cat piss ate away the corner wire poking out of the coil. That was a fun one to find. Let's go ahead and take this chip off. Now, since I don't work on the 4S very much, I better be sure to remember where is the dot? Where is the dot? So if I forget, you guys remind me. The dot is pointing at this little diagonal, diagonal line to this big cap right next to, the, to this hole in the board. All right, so that's the dot. So let's take this off. We're going to go with this just for practical reasons. Rather than use our multimeter and do a whole lot of comparison, we are going to go with, let's just replace the chip because it is in a microwaved board, which tends to get electrical damage. And it was also a board that had water damage, although it doesn't really look very watery on this chip. And let's just go ahead and swap that out and then see whether or not we need, you know, this is going to be a difficult one. Mostly because I need to go pick up some kids sooner rather than later. All right, let's see. What do you think of conductive adhesive? Is it as good as solder? Oh, no, 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 no. Never buy it. Never use it. Throw away any stuff that you have. That stuff is total trash. Conductive adhesive. I guess conductive adhesive is, is, is better than the conductive paint. That is just a disaster waiting to happen. I don't know how many boards we've seen that are ruined with the conductive paint. Just, oh, that's a nightmare. It doesn't do anything. It's not really conductive like in any way, shape, or form compared to a wire. All right. Uh, when none of this stuff is really that... that uh, you know, it's all, it's all fairly straightforward. All right. So now where am I going to get a, where am I going to get a new Nimbus? I don't have a new Nimbus. Ah, what are we working on? We are working on a microwaved, uh, flame shot out of it. Never worked again. iPhone 4S for data recovery. All right. So let's see. Uh, let's just look around and see, is this, this board's a little bit water damaged, but I, it, I think the 4S doesn't really get touch problems very much, even when it's water damaged, because I've never seen one before. All right, let's cut that bracket off. We're going to harvest this guy's Nimbus. We're going to reball it, and we're going to stick it on our 4S, and let's see. All right, for fabricating prototyping, it's good. For repair, don't. Yeah, the conductive adhesive is one of those things that is for 
somebody who's trying to avoid soldering at all costs. My advice would be stop trying to avoid soldering. Soldering is fun. Soldering is straightforward and just get the right equipment. It's really not terribly expensive to get um, to get good equipment for, for soldering that you'll have your whole life. You would be surprised at how often I will use, uh, you know, my microscope and soldering stuff for things that are not anywhere, not related to iPhone work at all. Well, look at that coil. It's got like, like a hat. Looks like a Hershey kiss. Halloween Hershey kiss. Okay. All right, so this is our donor Nimbus. All right, there it is. Where'd you go, bro? There it is, okay. All right, do you use flex to solder the chip back on or lead solder? Flex or lead solder? Uh, I'm gonna use leaded solder. I'm gonna stick this back on with leaded solder. So we're gonna take a hopefully slightly less water damaged Nimbus. All right, let's grab the Nimbus off of our donor board and then we're gonna reball it. Jessa, when you were looking at the schematic and the board is an Intel and the part is not listed because ZXW only says Qualcomm, how do you find out what it is? You use your brain. You are, you often have to work with one, one board as another, but you know, work from the schematic, not from ZXW. ZXW is I don't even think we've clicked on ZXW for this project. ZXW is a time saver and people get into the habit of using it for everything way too much. All right. Now, if it's really tempting, especially if you're in the let's try to avoid soldering at all costs camp, it's really tempting to say, can I just pop this chip as is right on my new board on my other board and the answer is no you have to re-ball it because it is going to need to make very even electrical contacts through all of those little connection points there so we're going to re-ball this sucker all right non-leaded is irritating to use it is and it is unnecessary uh, it's, it's, there's, there's nothing good about it other than the fact that it's good for the environment. And at an industrial scale, sure does make sense. If we were making a million, million iPhones, and those are going to all end up in somebody's backyard, and we would want to use lead-free solder. But we are fixing devices and keeping them from the landfill and giving them extra life. So for that, we are going to stack the deck in favor of being actually able to execute our repair and we're going to use the best solder that we can which is going to be good old 1975's finest leaded solder all right so we're going to clean off this chip and then we're going to go fish in the stencil bucket and hope that we can find a stencil that can match the pitch of nimbus good old nimbus the iPhone 4S was the best built phone ever. It sure was a good phone. It never got touched. It took until 2018, the very end of 2018, for a 4S board level touch problem to hit my desk. And that was only after an idiot microwaved it and quote from the note, if you're just joining us, phone was put in a microwave, ran for a second, phone shot a flame out of the side hasn't worked since that's what it takes to kill a 4s that was a tough little bugger all right now let's go fish let's play which one of these stencils is going to match the 4s let's see let's go fish on the iphone 6 so i'm just going to randomly see if i can find nope i'm just looking for a stencil that happens to have the same pitch. Ha ha! Yay! Way to go! Uh, whatever you are, iPhone 6. What is that? iPhone 6. What's a big square chip like that? Mm, maybe, maybe audio, but it looks kind of small. All right, so we're going to 
line up our stencil just like this. Is this stream still live, guys? I hope so. I hope so. All right, now we're gonna get my new favorite thing soon to be featured on iPad Rehab Supply, which are Jessa's finger condoms. We're gonna put a finger condom on. WTF, microwave, why? Yes, I don't know. You can go yell at, uh, at uh, I can't tell if that's the end user or not. Guy in Illinois. All right, let's find some paste. So we've got our iPad Rehab Supply iPhone 6 flat stencil. Perfect for all of your iPhone 4S Nimbus reballing needs. You never know. You never know when you might need to fix a microwave flame shot out of the sideboard in order to get somebody's data from their iPhone 4S. We've got iPad Rehab Supply, leaded, good old fashioned 1975's finest leaded solder paste and Jess's finger condom. Ready to reball, that's all you need. All right, so let's go ahead and drop down our temperature on the good old hot air station and we're gonna drop our air way down, way down, way down, way down. All right. Okay, 4chan prank. Yes, this is this this repair is brought to you by 4chan. Lots of people going, <laughs> somebody actually did it. Somebody actually did it. The dark side of 4chan. 4chan turns on its own. I kind of feel like the only type of person that would put their phone in a microwave thinking that it could actually dry out would be the kind of person that is a is a heavy 4chan 4chan participant to begin with so yeah yeah you got it coming bro all right so we're gonna stick a little bit of paste on here now that paste is in the uh juicier side than normal all righty now i'm going to do this i learned something the first microwave video that we did i learned a little bit about how microwaves work that i didn't know so it's definitely worth it it was Really interesting on that other video, you should look it up. It's somewhere buried on this channel where I took a micro a phone that I thought I thought one that came in, I thought I was suspicious of microwave. So then I took a 5C, threw it in the microwave, took it back out so that we could see what the microwave actually did. It was really cool because the microwave has this sort of uh, radiation pattern that your food goes around and around and around, which really explains a lot about how come this sort of the, the side of the mashed potatoes is hot and the other side is totally cold. All right, so we're going to now make some balls. All right, so let's see if we can sneak up on this and crisp up some balls. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. There we go, perfect little reball. All righty. When I was in the Air Force, we used to cook food with the output from the radar equipment that we worked on. Interesting. Did it also have mashed potatoes hot on one side, cold in the center? All right. Uh, did I ever get my stuff back from CBP, Customs and Border Patrol? No, I did not. And here's why I thought that the refurbished LCDs, the OEM refurbs that were taken, stolen from me, along with uh, about $1,000 worth of mason chips and whatever else is in the box because contraband hanging out, anything that hangs out with contraband is contraband. Uh, so those beautiful, already been paid for, refurbished OEM, best you could possibly get for your customer uh, LCDs went into the, into the trash can. Um, that one, what I did was I, um, I wanted to kind of take the advice of some of the folks that, that, um, had really well documented seizures. So where you have like the IMEI of every single one of your LCDs that you send to China for refurbishment, etc. Um, so I wanted to do that. Where is this chip? I'm gonna be bummed out if I if I flicked it away. Um, so that was my plan was to just kind of really document and then follow up with some future seizure where I would be have the strongest case. 
So in short, I went on a family trip to Paris shortly after my seizure, thought about it, and then decided that the, what I was going to do would be to sort of not fight this case and wait for a better one to come along. All right. Um, they found microwave shake water atoms. Heating anything with water. Yes, that is true. Okay. So let's tighten up my balls, shall we? Nobody likes balls that are all droopy and uneven sized. Everybody likes nice tight balls. There we go. Beautiful balls. All right. That guy looks rusty. My, are you talking about my Nimbus? No, it doesn't. My Nimbus looks great. All right. Um, IMEIs that are linked to the phone, not to the LCDs. No, it means that it's the IMEI is linked to the to the phone, but it's the intent is that um, to prove that an LCD, you know, like to prove that this LCD with an Apple logo on it because it came from an Apple phone that that phone was bought and paid for. So if you kind of have this sort of, um, this one came from this phone so that you can establish that these are not um, LCDs that are Apple OEM that fell off a truck and that were stolen and then sold and therefore counterfeit or you can't have it. So the more documentation you can have, the better. Still doesn't work. I was just talking to a friend in the industry who had $80,000, 80, not $80. $80,000 worth of LCDs just boof, you know, just just put in a microwave and flame shot out of them. He had every IMEI. He had all of that stuff. It still did not matter. Um, and that's why this is a big problem. And what we need to do is we need to clarify the law. Okay. All righty. Let's, let's see if we can stick this back on here. All right, who remembers? Where does my dot go? All right, we're gonna get lucky even if we forgot because we've got this one spot where there's no ball at all, right there. Okay, so that's gonna match right there. There we go. And my dot uh, goes right up here. Let me just make sure I don't, I think those guys are supposed to talk to each other, but let's just check one, two, three. So here's where we could check something like ZXW, which I'm not 100% sure that ZXW is plugged in here. Let's see, window capture. Uh, let's do, yeah, window capture number eight. Do you see ZXW? It does not. Well, okay, so we are gonna have to skip on that. Yes, so. Uh, those two pads that appear to be stuck together under there are both NC not connected pads. So not connected, not worry about it. Okay. The right to repair bill needs to pass. Yeah. Come on. State of New York. Yeah. It's not, you know, right to repair has a season for sure. But if you are in New York, I was telling guys at this uh, ERC conference, you'd be surprised. I was very impressed with the guys that are that are working there, the the actual politicians. They were so attentive. They they were really listening. They were willing to forego going to lunch so that they could hear out, you know, people that were passionate enough to show up on their doorstep. You know, it was really great. So they are definitely reading those letters. They knew like, oh so yeah, like uh, 80 or 90 of my constituents have written in. They knew those, those facts. So write those letters, go over to ifixit.com if you're in the state of New York and it will just prompt you to, hey, you wanna fill this out? Say sure. All right. Hey, you did not tell me that. You did tell me that. I did, yes. There's a Justin Millman. I was just telling you about this. All right, let's get this Nimbus back on here. I was talking to Justin at the ERC conference. Justin fixes 500 cracked iPad screens a month for school. And I said, I bet you really know how to put on an iPad screen so that it doesn't come back to haunt you. He said, yes, I do. So I think it would be fun one day to do some kind of a, 
you know, go out and find industry experts. You know, who's going to really know how to do X, Y, or Z? It's somebody who does it a lot. So something like that. Um, if the new chip doesn't work, would you then remove it and test each pad in continuity mode? Not in continuity mode, um, because that would be asking a very narrow question compared to asking a very similar question using a different, different method. All right, so we've got our new Nimbus on here, which is really just kind of a uh, easy, quick thing to do, if not for being on stream and chatting with you guys, though. So it would be a, you know, a really quick job. Why are we doing that? Because we have water damage in the area of the chip. We have evidence of electrical damage right in the area of the chip. And there's not a whole lot of other obvious damage. So our physical and electrical presentation lines up with Let's just see what happens if we replace this Nimbus. So we're replacing our water damaged microwave Nimbus with a slightly less water damaged Nimbus. Ideally, we would get a new one. And we may still, if we end up not, not uh, you know, having to kind of go down the rabbit hole on this one a little bit. All right, let's see. Out of all the new model iPhones, which one would you consider the most reliable with the least issues? That would be iPhone SE. No question in the world, iPhone SE. Uh, rarely gets problems that are not user induced and it's a great little phone because it doesn't get the flexion based defects. Let's see whether or not we have touch on this and if not then we would have to really start going down the rabbit hole a little bit and I'm not sure how much time we have because I gotta go teach robotics. Also gotta figure out robotics. All right let's go over to hand cam and we'll see whether or not we can get lucky on this or not. Let's see. Where is hand cam? There it is. All righty. Okay, iPhone 3, best ever. Yeah, I mean, I have an iPhone 3 that's still working. I have an iPhone 4S. I think my original iPhone 4S is still working. All right, here's our screen. Pretty sure this is a this is my good screen. So it's funny when you start working on the 4S. Where's a 4S battery that works? Let's see. iPhone 10. Uh, no, <laughs> iPhone 10 gets water damage like crazy and all sorts of problems. iPhone 10 gets water damage more than the iPhone 8 for sure. All right, got that in there. All right. Let's see. Let's see. All right, let's prop this sucker up so that you guys can see the screen with me. And we are going to plug in our dock. And we'll plug in this battery that I've been charging up. And our good old 30 pin connector. They get water damage because people think it's water resistance. That is true. I've been seeing a lot of complaints. Oh, I have seen some uh, activity over on the Apple support community forum. Always fun to go over there and tell people how to actually fix stuff. I think I'll do a stream on that. All right, how do you put this in here? Which way does it go? All right, I see my Apple logo. Let's see. Is Apple Pay NFC, the near field communication chip, a replaceable part? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can swap out the Stockholm chip and put in another one. Now we get to watch and wait for the good old iPhone 4S to boot for a half hour. All right. iPhone 6. You can look at them. All right. Any progress? Yay! Touch! Now, let's see if this dude has his passcode. All right. We're fixing the Nimbus chip. All right, let's see. All right, let's see if this guy's passcode works. It's gonna really suck. You're gonna get to watch me bang the table again if this passcode is wrong. All right, he gave us two. Yay! He knows his passcode.
passcode. Hooray! There you go, guys. It is working. Look at that beautiful touch. Yay! Three cheers for the slightly less water damage Nimbus. Good old 4S. See that 4S? 4S, you are a great phone. You can get thrown in a microwave, ran for a second phone, shot a flame out of the side. Hasn't worked since. And you can still start working again as long as you dig out some shorts in the board and throw on a slightly less water damage Nimbus chip. There you go, iPhone 4S. <laughs> All right. Um, so now it's time to recover all of the pictures off of this phone for this guy and give him the good news and go pick up the kids. So go support the right to repair. Go, if you're in one of the states, and there's a lot of them now, go to ifixit.com and they, wherever you are, they will, they will uh, have a form based on your IP address contacting them. That will just pop up so easy to do. A little form that you can fill out and it will, it will mail itself to um, your senator. Here's my tip for you guys that are interested in the right to repair. Uh, the lobbyists that uh, right to repair uh, folks are paying, worth every cent. Um, he told me that the best way to get attention of your uh, representative is to give them a fax. Yeah, fax. You know, because phone calls, you know, they might not be there that moment. Emails kind of get bundled together. But a fax, if you send somebody a fax, then it's going to print it out and somebody's going to have to pick it up and actually deal with it. So find out those fax numbers. Go fax your representative. And let's, you know, let's try to get some uh, more parts and information out there so that we can fix things like the good old iPhone 4S that was in a microwave. And that is it for this stream. And I'll see you next time.